these small pansies are great simple little flowers in so many ways but drawing them with a pen is not such a simple thing to do with them but I did think they are a great subject to not just have some fun and draw flowers but to use hatching for colour for the local colour we often think of hatching as something that we use primarily for shade and shadow and of course it's excellent for that when we're drawing with pen however we can also use it to represent colour and particularly when there's not as much shade and shadow happening as is the case here across the flowers now there is much darker shadows in the backgrounds between the flowers so we're going to do that but we're going to use hatching to represent the color the purples and the dark purples and so you can see what I've done with this first flower I've outlined the flower with a fairly a fairly light touch a fairly unbroken line I think with flowers such as pansies that are a fairly small delicate petal we don't want a heavy outline because that doesn't really reflect what we see in fact the edges tend to often curve slightly away from us which gives them an even lighter visual appearance but at this point I'm working on doing this this bluey purpley color and also the darker blacky purpley color that we have in the front now these first couple of flowers perhaps aren't the greatest shapes by the time I was doing the last ones I'd gotten into the 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 habit not the habit so much but the thinking of how they look and how they're formed what their construction is how the petals look when the flowers are a bit three quarters on or side on and so forth and of course there also are a couple of flowers here at different stages of their life and so one of them is closed up on the way out one of them is just starting to close up to be done with and a couple look like they're pretty freshly opened now I am drawing this larger than actual size that wasn't my intention but because I drew the first one larger than the reference that set the pace for everything else now this is the sort of thing where the sort of subject where we don't want to agonize over exactness but we do want to make sure that our flowers credibly look like the way pansies look from various positions and so it's it's really understanding how they're put together and looking at what sort of variations we see with individual pansies now with this one I've just drawn this is probably my shocker in terms of the flowers I, I took that back petal way too high up I, I could have taken it just two-thirds of the way up and it would have looked a lot better I did the same thing actually with the one in front but not quite as badly in that I took that back petal up too far although I drew it the other way around the first one so it wasn't the same the same mistake and now I'm just starting to make some suggestions of things around if you're finding this interesting please hit the like button for me that helps me out as much as I hope this is helping you out so I'm using a 0.2 millimeter pen and this drawing took me 38 minutes in real life to do and you're watching this I think at, at triple time which means if you want to see it slower you can use the cog icon that you can see on your screen and that will let you select either a faster or a slower speed to watch and the dialogue will be sped up or slowed down accordingly but it does mean that any video where there is a lot of speeding up so that the, the overall video isn't too long if you really want to watch it at much closer or even slower than real-time drawing you can with that cog icon it's something I think a lot of people don't realize is there and generally the voiceover if there is one is still intelligible whichever way you go so so the other thing to bear in mind when we're doing hatching is that we are representing the color the value of the color and by value I mean the darkness the lightness or darkness so in other words if we desaturated this photo on a, on a digital device and took all the color off it how dark 
would the color in the bluey purpley coloring be? That's the value. But we're not just trying to accurately represent the color as a black value with hatching. We're also wanting to create clarity in terms of what we're looking at. So that often means that we exaggerate or we adjust in some way what the values are and where they are. So that different flowers, for instance, look a bit more separate from each other that we don't let too much of the same, the same value be created, even if that reflects the flower because in life, because the flower does have the advantage of color. And when we choose the photo, often it's the color that gives clarity. And so when we're losing that clarity by making everything, if you like, grayscale with the hatching and with the black pen, then it's often helpful to introduce, as I said, changes to to what we're drawing so that the main things stand out more clearly and i keep adjusting these these petals the the sh shadows the um the color the hatching for the color on the petals i keep adjusting those as i continue through the drawing and I'm also keen to start doing some of the really dark shadows between the flowers and I fully intend to exaggerate these as well so that with the exception of these couple of long flowers, um, leaves of a different plant, these couple of long strappy leaves that go vertically up through the flowers and, and cross on the diagonal, that except for those, I'm going to do all the foliage quite darkly valued so that despite the fact that they've got quite a lot of hatching on them the flowers still come forward and we can work out comfortably enough what they are i certainly want the flowers to not feel as dark as the darker shadows even though quite possibly the the darkest color on the pansies actually are a darker value than the darker shadows. But I do want to pop them forward. Pansies, when they grow in a situation such as this, grow up through other low plants that they've seeded amongst. And so they can end up being very straggly, but they can reach a reasonable height as they push up trying to get to the sun. If they're growing in a sunny spot with nothing around them, then they're a lot smaller and a lot more compact because they don't have to waste energy stretching to get the sunlight. And now you can see I'm working on making quite dark the areas around the pansies and particularly the most significant ones, the ones where most of them are drawn. I had actually thought this was going to be a very quick drawing, maybe a 10 minute drawing. I don't know what I was thinking about that. It's the longest drawing I've done for a week. Now, the line direction is important always with hatching. That's not to mean there's only one way, but we want to hatch in a way that both reflects the underlying form. So in this case, it's the curvature of the petals going back, reaching backwards as they start to get larger and and fold backwards or equally where they're bent over as they've as they've shriveled up basically. So we want to think of our line direction before we start it. But we also want to keep it as light as we can because these are a delicate looking flower and we don't want to have a heavy appearance to our line work, if we can possibly avoid it. Now, my flowers up here aren't lining up with each other as closely as they have up till now. As I start to move further out, the differences between 
the flowers I've already drawn and the reference mean that that not so much the error but the variation between what I'm drawing and what's in the reference increases as I move further out. So I need to be aware of that and make adjustments so that my pansies, my flowers, look, look realistic as much as I can, rather than trying to match what's happening in the reference. So you can see I've gone way larger than my photo, but that's okay. Quite happy to do that. So in some ways, I'm drawing the effect of detail once I go beyond the pansies. With the pansies, I'm drawing the pansies and I'm doing them quite intentionally from pansy to pansy. But when I go further back, I'm trying to draw the overall effect of what's lower down behind the pansies. I'm not trying to draw it precisely. It's always good though to, if we can, in a plant such as this, to get one or two leaves drawn in where we take care with the leaves to capture the, the, the physiology of that particular species of plant in its leaves as closely as we can. Because certainly for people who, who know pansies, that's going to affirm more strongly that this is a pansy. It's going to add a greater sense of realism. We wouldn't have to do that with all the leaves that we see here, but we want to have one or two. And I've done that with the leaf in the lower right that comes out on the right hand side of that first flower head that I drew. And so starting starting to get close I'm, I'm really just now trying to add enough line work to create a little bit of evenness in the symmetry of just the drawing a little bit more in the bottom right. But what I'm also doing now is now I'm making adjustments to the values. I'm darkening parts that I think, well, if I darken this bit, then this flower will stand out more. If I darken this part, it's going to add clarity to what I'm doing. And it's not just adding darkness to the in-between parts. It's also adding darkness to some of the petals to make distinctions either between different parts of the one flower or between different flowers. Now that I've got this very dark hatching in for the lower down areas, the flowers do look a little bit lighter. And it's basically done. Of course, you'll find this photo on my channel community page. So why not have a go with this cute little bunch of blue pansies? G'day, I'm Stephen Travis. A little bit of a different subject and a little bit of a different intention, but I hope you found it helpful. As I said, please hit the like button and why not have a go drawing this yourself? But look, whatever you draw and however you draw it, make sure you have fun. I'll see you next time. Bye.